Okay, in this step we're going to do some final tweaking to the overall image by using a post-processing volume. And these are absolutely brilliant. It will allow us to do so much to the image. We're not even going to use most of the features. We're just going to add a few and I'll let you experiment with the rest. But the way we do that is still in visual effects like we were in the previous uh, step. We're going to go to post-process volume and we're just going to drag one of those in. Okay, so by default they're bound within this box that you can see and if you want it to just happen in a certain area then you make the box that size so let's say you want um, the screen to have a blue tinge when you walk through some water you would have a box that size but for what we're doing we want it to happen everywhere so we actually want this to be unbound so what I'm gonna do is just kind of turn a few things up and scroll down and somewhere near the bottom there you go, there's an unbound option. So then we don't have to worry about the size, it'll just happen everywhere. So that's kind of step one. And then we can start changing what we want to change. So I'm going to start with colour grading. And I'm just going to come under global and there's a few things that I want to look at. So the first one is saturation. At the moment, it's a little bit too colourful for my taste. So I want to just rein that in a bit. So if you just go to this W option, which is kind of, it does all three of these options at once and we just bring it down so you could go all the way down to black and white which is all right but it's not what i want i'm going to go for something like 0 0.8 i think so i'm going to take some color out and if you you want to see like kind of a before and after what you've done you can just toggle this box here so you can see i've not taken loads of color out but a bit let's go actually 0 0.85 okay so i've done that and then what i want to do is up the contrast a touch and i'm just going to do this by eye until I think it looks cool. Yep, so I've gone for about 1.32 there. And I'm gonna leave everything else alone there. I'm happy with that. There's other things that you could do. So you see there's loads there that I can change, but I'm gonna go past all that. The next thing I want to look at is under lens, these image effects. So there's loads that you can do here. So if we do this chromatic aberration, if you do do that effect there, it's um, used in games loads. Um, I, I don't want it for what we're doing now but I thought I'd point it out it's a nice one the one I actually want is this vignette intensity I want a vignette on there so when you turn it on at 0 0.4 you don't really notice a lot but when you turn it up it just kind of darkens the edges of your screen which I'm a big fan of that effect so again I don't want to overdo it I just want it to be fairly subtle but I want that to be in there you can as well if you want to add another layer of bloom this is something Unreal Engine is known for it loves its bloom so by default you're at 0 0.675 but you might just want to up that ever so slightly so you can you can overdo it which um, you want to be careful about but i'm just going to up, up that to about one i think and again you can toggle that on and off and you'll see that it just has a little effect not too much okay the next thing i am a sucker for uh, being a fan of people like jj abrams i like a bit of lens flare so we're gonna turn the intensity on and there you go you can see we've got a lens flare anywhere where you see light so that for me is too strong so i'm just going to knock the intensity down i only want to just be able to see it really so let's have a look at that now yeah that's pretty nice i also want to turn up the bokeh size so that just makes the size of these these light lens blurs a little bit bigger so there it's only just there now you can only just see it let's see what it looks like when we look at the sun yeah that's kind of nice so we've got some lens flare going on beautiful and then the final thing that I really want to go for is some depth of field, which is where things that are kind of a bit further in the background can be out of focus, which I like the look of. Um, it doesn't get a lot of use in games because it's weird because your eyes tend to focus on whatever you need to see. But for what we're doing, which is kind of just getting our heads around the visual side of the engine, we're going to have a little play with it. So tick the box for method and I'm going to go with the Gaussian depth of field which I quite like and straight away you can see it starts doing something and then what I want to do is change the focal distance I believe and I want to just sort of get the cabin in focus roughly I'm going to change that in a second I'm going to go for focal region so that's the how big of an area will be in focus and we're just going to up that so that more more of the level is in focus like that and then I'm gonna change the near transition I'm just gonna turn that all the way up because I don't want the near field to be out of focus at all so that's good 
and then what I'm going to change is the far blur size and just bring that down so that I'm not overdoing it again subtlety is the key so I still want to get the the effect of the trees being there so let's go for 0 0.1 and see what that gives yeah so that's only just ever so slightly blurred but I like that you can go um, as high with as you want with that and get whatever effect that you prefer but I, I only want a little one I don't, I don't want to overdo it so that will do it for post processing for now um, again you can by all means have a mess around with this try out all the different post processing options and get something that looks really cool uh, but for now I'm going to leave it there again I'm just going to have a little play test a little run around so maybe maybe I've overdone it on the bloom everything looks a little bit too much like a dream but compared to where we were just a few steps ago everything's just starting to look a little bit more polished and refined so this makes me much happier okay in the next step we're going to bring in a couple of particle effects pre-made particle effects um, just to add some smoke to the chimney and some fire uh, and then we'll be pretty close to finished I think thanks for watching if you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went, and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinney. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.